Today I want to show you 7 amazing network engineer tools you definitely need to know as an IT professional, so keep watching. Hi everybody, welcome to The Digital Life, my name is Christian and today we talk about some amazing network engineer tools I've used almost every day when I was working as a network engineer. We will start with some basic and simple tools and then also step into some more advanced stuff. And when you want to become a network engineer or you're a network administrator, you definitely need to know all of them. They are all completely free and available on almost all operating systems. Note that I don't want to spend too much time on every single one of them because especially the last ones can be very complex and powerful and could fill multiple hours of training courses. You will also need to understand the fundamentals of networking in order to make use of them. And when you want to learn more about Linux, Python, networking and all those stuff, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So let me share my screen with you guys and we start with the first tool. So the first tool I want to show you is Ping. Ping is a very simple and effective tool to test if your computer can reach a specific destination host. To do that, just go to the command line and type in ping and then the name or the IP address of the computer you want to check. For example, let's do a quick test with the server google.com and you can see our computer will now consistently send out ICMP echo requests and once the Google server has received those packets, it will respond to it. To stop that, just hit Ctrl C. You can also specify much more attributes on these ping commands. For example, let's just send out four packets. To do that, just enter ping dash C and then the number of packets. In our case, I want to send out four packets and then again enter google.com and you can see the ping command will automatically send out four ICMP echo requests and stop immediately afterwards. You can also see some interesting statistics about how many packets were transmitted, how many were received and if there are any packets that are lost. So usually ping is used to check if your computer can open a network connection to a different host. So note that when a host is unavailable that could mean two things. So either the computer is offline or your computer can't reach the specific destination. And the second option is that the destination host has received your ICMP echo request but it doesn't respond to it. So that can also happen in some cases, you need to consider that as well. So the next tool I want to show you is NSLOOKUP. So NSLOOKUP is a command to do DNS queries. And that can be used to resolve IP addresses, do reverse lookup or other DNS records. In our case, let's just find out the IP address of google.com. To do that, just enter NSLOOKUP and then the name of the computer you want to get the IP address from. So enter google.com. And you can see our computer is now sending a DNS request to our primary DNS server, which is this one here. And the response from the DNS server is this here. You can see google.com has responded with one IP address and one IPv6 address. You can also look up different DNS records. For example, let's just check the MX record, which mainly will resolve to the IP address of the mail server. To do that, just enter NS lookup and hit enter. Now we can set the type of the DNS record we want to resolve. In our case I want to set the type equal mx to check the mail server record. Now we need to enter a domain where we want to get the mail server record from. In our case let's try gmail.com. You can see our primary DNS server has now resolved five entries here. And these are some other DNS records that will now resolve to the IP addresses of those mail servers. To check these records, you can now switch back set type equal a record because an a record just translate the name to the IP address. We copy it and enter it. And now we get the IP address of the actual mail server of gmail.com. Note that these IP addresses aren't always the same because especially in large cloud environments like this example, they do DNS round robins or load balancing. So you might get another IP address when you query the same DNS record. We can now exit the NS lookup with the exit command. So NS lookup is mainly used for troubleshooting DNS issues or when your computer can't reach a specific name or specific URL, you can check the NS lookup if your computer is able to resolve to that IP address. The next tool I want to show you is Tracert. So Tracert or Traceroute on Linux is a tool to observe root path between network devices. 
Let's do a quick example with google.com. Just type in trace route google.com. And you can see our computer will now try to determine all intermediate hops between our computer and the destination host. Traceroute uses a simple trick to do that. When a gateway receives a network packet, it will reduce the TTL value of the network packet by 1. And once it hits 0, it will stop forwarding this packet, but instead send a response to the origin source computer. So what Traceroute does is just sending out multiple echo requests and increasing the TTL value starting by 1. And once we increase that value, we always get one step further in the chain towards our destination host. You can also see that one gateway is not responding to those echo requests and that can happen in some cases because gateways won't always respond to some echo requests. For example, some are just ignoring a specific protocol like TCP, ICMP or UDP echo requests but some aren't just responding to any one of these. But you can try with a different protocol as well. So let's try if this gateway here will respond to ICP echo requests because Traceroute on Linux is using UDP echo requests by default. To do that we need to run Traceroute with root permissions and then add the dash i parameter to use ICP echo requests instead of these default UDP. So let's do that again. You can see the fourth gateway is now responding to these ICP echo requests. So Traceroute is a very powerful tool to troubleshoot network issues based on routing. For example, when you can't reach a specific destination, especially in larger network environments, you can test with Traceroute at which point the network packet won't get a response anymore. So you can start the investigation on this gateway and check if the routing tables are correct and so on. So Traceroute is very powerful for these kind of troubleshootings. The next tool I want to show you is iPerf. To do that, I will just spawn a new window and connect it to my cloud server to do a short demonstration. Now, iPerf is a tool to measure network throughput between two devices. You will need to run iPerf as a server mode on one device and as a client mode on the second device. You will also need to consider the traffic direction because iPerf will always upload the traffic from the client to the server. So in our case I want to measure the bandwidth of my upload on my client. To do that I will start iperf in server mode on the cloud server. To do that just enter iperf-s for server mode and it will automatically listen on TCP port 5001. You can also specify a different port or UDP protocol in the parameters if you want to. So let's open iperf on the client and to do that just enter iperf-c for client mode and then the IP address of the server you want to connect to. It will automatically connect and start uploading the file transfer. Once the transfer is finished you can see the bandwidth. In my case I have something like 20 Mbits per second upload on this client. You can also specify TCP window size, UDP protocol and much more. So iperf is a very nice tool to measure network throughput in large network environments or for VPN connections or WAN connections, something like this. So let me close this window here and the next tool I want to show you is Nmap. So Nmap is an advanced network scanner and it is a very powerful and complex tool. It is mainly used for doing security audits or scan a single host for all open network ports or try to determine which operating system or applications are running on this host. It can also scan for all IP addresses in an entire network if you want to do some inventory of your network devices and so on. So let's do a simple test on my cloud server and try to scan all open ports on this computer. To do that just enter nmap and then dash f it will scan for all commonly used network ports and then the IP address or the name of the server. You can see this test runs very quickly because it will just scan a few ports. You can also specify much more parameters in this command. To check this just open the manual of nmap and you can see there are a lot of parameters you can use to do specific tests. You can also change network protocol. So it's really complex and powerful. I have linked you the official documentation in the description below so check it out. The next tool I want to show you is Wireshark. So Wireshark is a network protocol analyzer and it's undoubtedly the gold standard in the IT industry to do network protocol analyzing or network troubleshooting. You can basically scan all incoming and outgoing network packets on a specific interface. In my example I just want to see all network packets on this interface here, that is my virtual switch of my Hyper-V host. 
start the capture. You can also specify different attributes, different filters and so on. In my example, I will just stop that packet capture and just show you what you can do with it. So for example, we can just select a packet and inspect the data which is transmitted. So let's do a simple test and try to capture a network connection. To do that, I will start a virtual machine and open a simple HTTP connection and we try to analyze that with Wireshark. So I've just started an Ubuntu server which basically uses the EDH0 interface which is connected to my virtual switch. So let's try to capture these network packets. We can open the options in Wireshark and select the correct interface which is the default switch. I will also specify a capture filter. I just want to see packets that are coming on port 80 which is basically HTTP. In our virtual server I will now just try to open an HTTP connection by querying a website. Let's just do curl HTTP the dash digital dash live.com and you can see on Wireshark we will get those packet stream here. Because it's unencrypted we can also inspect the network traffic. So when you have a large network capture you can also do a right click on one packet and then follow the TCP stream. You will now filter only these network packets that belong to this particular stream. And you can now inspect what was sent from the client and what comes back from the server. In this case this is a simple HTTP request from our client to the host the-digital-live.com and we are just querying for the root URL. You can see the response from my server is doing a move permanently response that actually means it will do a redirect to the HTTP S site, that is this location here. So to even do that research in a much better way let me show the last tool and that is GNS3. So GNS3 is a very very useful tool to build your own test lab when you want to do networking research or do some troubleshooting on network and if you want to configure network devices and actually want to build your own networking test lab. This is also commonly used when studying for your CCNA, for Cisco certifications and so on because you can configure a lot of Cisco devices. But it's even more powerful than that. Because with GNS Free Server Edition you can also install it on a separate machine or on a Hyper-V machine and you can add virtual machines in that network environment too. So it seems I forgot to start my GNS Free Server so let me start it and we can have a look at it. So I have now restarted my GNS Free Server, it's now connected and we can start playing around with it. First we need to add a new project. Let's enter test-project. We can now add different network devices and connect them to each other and just build our own network test environment. So let me do something very very simple. Let's just add an Ethernet switch and connect it to a virtual machine. I want to use an Ubuntu server for that because it is a very simple and commonly used distribution. And let's now connect this server to the switch. To do that just select the network card here and a network interface on the switch. So it's now connected, but we need to start it first and also connect to the console. Let me change this here, change configuration to Telnet. So this is an easy connection, we can just open a Telnet connection and connect to that virtual machine. Hit apply and then start the virtual machine. So this server is now started, let us connect on Telnet on this port here and let's start to configure this server. To do that just enter Telnet, the IP address and the port. These ports are dynamically generated from the GNS server for every virtual machine you are running. And we are just now connected to the virtual Ubuntu server in this test environment here. It's now booting up, let's wait until it's finished and then connect other network devices. To do a simple test I want to connect it to my physical network. To do that you can either use the cloud object which is basically a bridge to your physical network or the NAT device which is a virtual NAT device. So let's just add a bridge interface here to cloud and let's connect this cloud object with the switch here. So the server is now booted up, I'm just connected to the shell and let's try if it gets an IP address. So let's check with if config and you can see it just got an IP address and that is now connected to my physical network via the cloud object. 
We can now start to add other network devices and just build a complete entire network with it virtually on our server. It's very very nice to troubleshoot network issues, reproduce test environments or just do networking research, study for your CCNA certifications. You can also do packet captures on those network connections you can later then open and inspect in Wireshark. So let us do this too and basically just do the same like we did in our virtual machine in Hyper-V and try to capture an HTTP connection to my website. To do that, we will now click on this Ubuntu server here, select the network card, right click and start capturing those network packets. Just click on OK and it will automatically open Wireshark and do a packet capture on all those devices. Let's apply a filter because I only want to see HTTP packets. To do that, just specify TCP port equal equal 80. Let's go back to our Telnet connection and just do a call command to HTTP the dash digital ops dash live.com and you can see it now captures all these network packets. If you want me to do more videos on that please hit the like button so I know this is valuable and I can create much more videos on that if you want to. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you could learn something and could see some interesting tools. You can also leave me a comment if I forgot some interesting tool. I'm always learning from these comments so please do so and just let me know your thoughts. So thanks everybody for watching, enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourself and I see you soon.